This video is from an introduction video course on how to build, test and deploy RESTful web services. And if you're interested in more videos that will teach you how to implement features like user sign up, sign in, email verification, password reset, and how to secure your REST API and implement token-based authentication, there are many more videos I have. So if you're interested, please check the link in the description to this video. And also please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I publish new videos weekly. In this video, we're going to apply some basic validation to our user details request model class. And we're going to do it to make sure that the first name provided is not empty. For example, that the last name and other required fields are not empty and password, for example, is of a correct length and so on. And to do that, we're going to use Hibernate validator and the bin validation constraints. And the good news is that because we used Spring Boot and because we have added to our POM XML file the Spring Boot starter web dependency, we don't really have to add any additional libraries to our project to be able to use uh, bin validation constraints. All we have to do is to enable validation for our bins and then to add a few annotations that will do the validation. So to kick in bin validation, I will add a new annotation just before the request body annotation. And that annotation is called valid. I'll need to import it. Let me import it from Javax validation like this. So adding this annotation will kick in the validation inside of our bin. And for validation to take place, we will need to add a few annotations here. And there are many annotations that we can use. You can Google for um, Hibernate uh, bin validation constraints, or you can open up my blog, appsdevelopableblog.com. And I have a section here, RESTful Web Services. If you go to Spring Boot section, there I have many tutorials and one of them is on how to validate request body in HTTP request. So if you open up this tutorial, I have a link to a documentation here. Just scroll down a little bit and there under validate Java bin fields, you will have a link to validation constraints. If you click on it, that will go to JBoss Hibernate documentation directly to a bin validation constraints. There are many of them. You can scroll down, have a look at what constraints are available and how they work, for example, and which one of them you can use in your bin validation. For example, in this example, in this video, I'm going to use add email validation to check whether the specified character sequence is a valid email address. So uh, let's have a look at how we can apply these annotations. I will go back to my Spring Tool Suite and to validate, for example, first name and to make sure it's not now, I will add an annotation which is called not now, like this. And let me import this annotation. And now I can apply this annotation to all the fields that I want to make sure are not now, for example, last name, email address and password, I want to make sure they're not empty. Now, if one of them is missing and is now, an error message will be displayed. The calling client application that receives HTTP response will receive HTTP status code 400, which is a bad request. And it will contain a message describing why this particular request was bad. There will be a default message, but we can also provide our own custom uh, message that we want to be displayed in that error message description. So to provide a custom message, I will use message attribute here. And I can provide a message like, for example, first name cannot be missing or empty like this. And I can provide message for other fields as well. For example, for the last name, cannot be now and for email address, let's say email cannot be now. And finally, password, password cannot be now. Now, uh, when validating password, we also want to make sure that password, for example, is longer than one character or two characters. Actually, a good length for password is around eight characters. So we want to make sure that password is longer than eight characters and is less than, let's say, 16 characters. So there is another annotation that we can use, which is called size. Let me import this annotation. And I will provide two attributes here, like minimum size of the password will be equal to, let's say, 8. And then maximum 
uh, length of the password will be equal to 16 characters. And if validation fails, if for some reason the password is less than eight characters, or if password is greater than 16 characters, I will provide a message here saying that password must be equal or greater than eight characters. So let me type it password. Okay, so we have uh, now a validation for password. We have validation for email, first name and last name. And we can also add uh, another validation for email to make sure that this is an email address and not simply a string. So let me import email annotation and that will go also from Javax validation constraints like this. So now I can save this and I can run my project. Again, to add validation, we needed to do two steps. We needed to add valid annotation and we needed to add the annotations inside of our bin. And if we want to temporarily stop validating, we will remove this annotation and validation will not take place. So let me run this application. I think it has started and now I will switch to a postman and I will send the HTTP request and see how it works. So I'll send the request and we got back 400 bad requests. It has failed. Let's scroll down and see why it has failed. So the password must be equal or greater than eight characters. This description is custom. We have just provided this description and our password is three characters. So let's provide a valid password. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters. Now let's send this and now it worked. HTTP status is now 200. Okay, so let's uh, provide invalid email address and see how it works. We send this and we will scroll down a little bit and we see a description that uh, this string must be a valid formatted email address. Okay, so that worked. Also, if um, there are more than one field which are invalid, for example, email is invalid and let's say first name is invalid. Let's say user provided first name uh, as uh, four, like, like this one character for which is an invalid first name. So if I send this HTTP request now, I should get two descriptions. One of them should be about the first name. So this one is about email. And if I scroll down a little bit, there should be another one about the first name. No, I don't have it. Let's go to Spring Tool Suite and see if we added validation for the first name. Right, we don't have size validation for the first name. Let me copy size and then I will add size for the first name. For example, size must be minimum two characters like this. And I will provide a message saying that first name must not be less than two characters like this. And I'll provide the same validation for uh, last name. I'll just change the last name here. So last name can be two characters, so we should be fine. Okay, now I will uh, run my application again and see how this works now. I'll switch to Postman, and send HTTP request and have a look at the number of errors. So we should get two errors, first name and then email address. I will scroll down. The first is about email address and the second is about first name. So the first name must not be less than two characters. Now, if I provide correct first name and correct email address, everything should work well. Okay, so now bin validation works. It's a powerful tool, easy to use. Just go through the documentation and see which annotations can be helpful for your bins so that you don't have to write much code uh, to validate them. Okay, so let's continue.